Well, Apple just announced the Mac mini upgrade and it's much smaller and it's got the widest price range that I've ever seen. Oh, um, this is not the Mac mini. This is the B-Link machine. And I wanted to show you that the Mac mini is actually smaller than this. This is 133 millimeters square. And the new Mac mini is 12.7 centimeters squared. So even a smaller footprint than this. This footprint is becoming super popular now. So there's gonna be a bunch of competition. The latest AMD chips, the latest Intel chips are getting into these machines now. And Apple didn't wanna miss out. I've ordered a bunch of configuration of these Mac minis and they're coming so I can do software developer tests on them. It's too early to actually make any conclusions yet, but it's looking pretty promising, especially because we know the M4 specs and the single core and multi-core performance for Geekbench. And I've recently made a video trying to predict the M4 Pro, and I made a low calculation with 12 cores and a high calculation with 14 cores. So the 12 core multi-core score I predicted was 17,000 and over 19,000 for the 14 core score. And both of these configurations are now available. Here is the baseline. We've got the M4 chip starting with 10 cores for performance, for efficiency. The memory bandwidth is higher on the base model too. We knew this already. So that's gonna be really good for AI applications. Okay, I won't say AI, okay? I'll say LLM. Sick of hearing about AI. Come on, let's, let's talk about machine learning. This is a software developer focused channel after all. 273 gigabytes per second memory bandwidth on the M4 Pro chip. M4 Max is coming up, probably being announced very soon, maybe even when I'm releasing this video. The M4 Ultra is gonna be insane if that does come out. Imagine having an LLM cluster of a few of these machines talking to each other via Thunderbolt 5. Yes, Thunderbolt 5 is now available on the M4 Pro Mac Minis. There aren't too many peripherals yet for Thunderbolt 5, but it's coming. There's already a dock, there's cables that Apple is selling on their own website, and there's third-party cables available through Cable Matters. I picked a few of those up. Why does Thunderbolt 4 matter? Well, first of all, if you're connecting multiple machines together to talk to each other, that's gonna be insanely fast. If we're talking about SSDs that are external, for example, we're gonna be reaching speeds of over six gigabit per second. That's almost as much as the internal drive itself, which means that you should no longer be scared, at least for a desktop, you should no longer be scared about getting those 512 or one terabyte configurations. 512, I don't know. It's not as comfortable as one terabyte. One terabyte, it should be enough. Now the M4 Pro, let's take a look at that. It starts at 1399, 12 cores, but it can go up to 14 cores for $200 more. And that's the high-end one that I was estimating for the Geekbench score. It goes up to 64 gigs of RAM and up to eight terabytes of storage. Now that eight terabytes of storage, that right there is probably not gonna be super useful or popular for people that are gonna be keeping this thing on their desks because of external storage and Thunderbolt 5 now available. If you are traveling, and yes, these machines are super portable now, even the Mac Studio was portable, which is a much larger machine. These are gonna be very portable. I recently made a video on a portable mini setup. I'll link to that down below if you wanna check it out. But if you're portable, maybe you wanna get a little bit more SSD or just carry the peripherals with you as well. Here we go, gigabit ethernet. Let's change that to 10 gigabit ethernet. I'm using 2.5 here. I didn't upgrade to 10 yet. And most people are probably still on gigabit. You should be fine with that. But let me tell you, 2.5 versus one gigabit is already a world of difference. 10 gigabit is gonna be is gonna be insane. And for hundred dollars more, depending on how long you're gonna keep this machine, it might be worth the upgrade. So with this machine maxed out, we are at $4,699 now. But now we're talking about a machine that is more specced out than my MacBook Pro. This is the M2 Max MacBook Pro. It has a faster chip. It has more storage, it has more RAM. Well, it's the same amount of RAM, 64 gigabytes is what I have in here. So if I bring this down to two terabytes to match what I have in my MacBook Pro here and one gigabit ethernet, I'm at $2,799, whereas this MacBook Pro cost me about 4,000. So that's the higher end of these Mac minis. A very capable machine with 64 gigs of RAM. That means you're gonna be able to run LLMs on these. And if you get multiple machines, you can link them up to clusters. I did a couple of videos on that recently as well. Now let's take a look at the lower end. This is the more uh, everyday machine. And we're talking about the regular M4 chip, the base model, which is 599 bucks. 
10 core CPU, 10 core GPU. The neural engine is the same 16 core neural engine they've had, except it's faster because these new chips are using a three nanometer process instead of the five nanometer process like the uh, previous generation. So for 599, you get 16 gigabytes of memory, not eight anymore. Everybody's gonna be super happy that 16 is now the minimum. It looks like Apple is getting rid of the eight. Maybe the next MacBook Air is also going to be 16 minimum, hopefully. And what's nice about the M4 chip is that it doesn't have a maximum of 24 gigabytes like the M2 and the M3 chips did. It goes up to 32 gigabytes of unified memory. And if you upgrade to that, you're still under $1,000. But then you have to look at the storage option. 256 gigabytes is really, you're, you're cutting it really close. Even after installing all the software developer tools, we're not even talking about media, no videos, no pictures, no music. We're just talking about software developer tools now, and you're gonna be filled up with 256. I have a 256 gigabyte MacBook Air here, and I constantly have to delete programs off of it so I can fit new developer tools on it. If you wanna see my developer setup on a Mac, I'll link a video down below as well. So 512, I'd say is the absolute minimum at this point. You're up to $1,199. One terabyte will give you a little bit more comfort. Then you're up to $1,399. And now you have to wonder, well, if I'm paying $1,399, should I just go for the M2 Pro? Because that's how much the base M2 Pro costs. So that's how Apple gets you. They always get you like that with little tiny upgrades that are $200 increments. It's all pre-calculated. It's all very nicely arranged. So you can go up that ladder just a little step at a time. But it is nice to see that for your grandma or for your mom that you can get that 16 gigabyte machine with 256 gigabytes of storage and it's only $599. Makes a nice little stocking stuffer. I mean, I'm just kidding. It's a pretty expensive stocking stuffer anyway. Now, one of the downsides is um, I still use USB-A quite a lot. Yeah, it's not gonna have any USB-A at all. So you're gonna be stuck doing something like, like this. Why can we not get peripherals that have USB-C as the default? Logitech, get on that, please. It's 2024, come on. And those of you that are design conscious, not me really, they'll notice that the pretty front of the Mac mini is now gonna be marred with a headphone jack and two USB-C ports. These are USB-C ports, by the way, not Thunderbolt ports. So it might be a little confusing because the ports are not labeled. You have to make sure you know which port you're plugging your cables into if you want Thunderbolt or if you want USB. I also think that the power supply is internal based on this picture right here, which is actually a nice bonus. I don't like having these kinds of things or these kinds of things laying around. So it's good that it's gonna be one neat cable for the power supply. Now I know I'm gonna be comparing apples and oranges here but I just wanted to take a quick look at the Mac Studio because the base model of Mac Studio has 32 gigs of RAM and you can upgrade that to 64 that's all you get for the base model that's the same as the Mac mini now and this one cost 2399 bucks already now I know it has the uh, Apple M2 Max chip in it hopefully soon with the M4 and it has more cores so they're charging quite a bit for that, quite a premium. But as far as RAM goes, and as far as storage goes, the Mac mini has pretty much caught up with the Mac studio. I think a lot of people are now going to look at a Mac mini as their serious desktop machine instead of maybe they were considering a Mac Studio or maybe they were even considering a MacBook Pro. That Mac Mini value has really shot up through the roof right now for those people that are deciding, which could make your decision a little bit more difficult, I suppose. But hopefully I'll be able to do some tests on these pretty soon. I'm getting a couple of these machines in. Let me know if you wanna see comparisons with other desktop machines that are mini like these. And also let me know if you are considering getting a Mac mini or would you prefer getting a MacBook Pro, for example? Anyway, fun little week for Apple with their announcements and you just get a 10 minute video announcement from Apple and it's right there available in the store for you to pre-order. I think they're still gonna have events throughout the year. I just think maybe they had too many events. Two or three is fine. We don't need four or five. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. I'll see you very soon with those M4 Mac minis.